pleasant good morning to everybody, all our students from UWI Mona, um, who have joined us through YouTube, etc. Welcome to this very, very important information session on financing your degree. This is part of our efforts as from the management of the Mona campus and in keeping with our student-centered approach to dealing with our students to expose you to all the possibilities that are out there for you to be able to finance your degree. We know that times are challenging, exacerbated, no doubt, by the COVID-19 pandemic, which have brought its own financial challenges. And so we have every interest to ensure that our students have access to financing so as to commence in respect to our new students and to continue in respect to our continuing students, your education. My name is Donovan Stanberry and I'm your campus registrar and we are very, very happy to host this seminar this morning. With me here today is the deputy principal to my left, Professor Ian Boxill. And in addition to Professor Boxill, we have a great cloud of witnesses here in, the, uh, in our council room to assist you with all the information you need. I want to particularly welcome from the Students' Loan Bureau, uh, Ms. Karina Higgins, Senior Loan uh, Processing Officer, who will make a presentation, as well as um, Shavan, Shavana Dusil, a customer service agent who will field some of your questions. We also have very important people here um, from the registry dealing with student services who will also be able to assist. Um, Dr. Marsha Morgan Allen, our senior assistant registrar for admissions. Uh, Mr. Lincoln Gordon, billions and receivables. Mr. Jason McKenzie, who is the director of the Office of Student Services and Development. Ms. Shana Hastin from the Office of Student Financing. We also have Mr. Jonathan Archie, who is the uh, senior assistant registrar responsible for student matters. So we are all here today um, to help you. And um, I want to particularly welcome uh, for the first time um, in this setting, uh, the new Guild President, uh, Daniel Mullins, um, who in our short time has proven to be a very, very strong advocate um, for, for our students, and we look forward, um, Daniel, uh, to working with you. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to start our proceedings this morning uh, with some opening remarks from our Deputy Principal, Professor Boxill. Thank you, Registrar, and good morning to all. Um, let me start by acknowledging the representatives from the Students' Loan Bureau um, and also persons from the Markham, Marketing Department. Um, of course, our Guild President, uh, who the Registrar just referred to, uh, Dr. Marsha Mar Morgan Allen, our Senior Assistant Registrar Admissions, um, the bursary representatives in uh, Mr. Jacqueline Scott um, Crossley and also, of course, uh, Mr. Jason McKenzie, who is the director of the Office of Student Services and Development, Ms. Shana Hastings, who is the manager of the Office of Student Financing, Mr. Lincoln Gordon, the assistant manager, Billings and Receivables. Of course, our students um, and the parents of those students who we hope will benefit um, substantially from this conversation this morning. Let me say that I'm grateful for this opportunity to share a few remarks um, in my capacity as um, Deputy Principal at this orientation session which is held in collaboration with the Students' Loan Bureau. The added value of a University of the West Indies education is that it's in how we prepare our students to be globally aware and grounded in a regional identity. And this extra 
this added value from having a regional institution sets us apart from other institutions in Jamaica and the wider Caribbean region. And it, is in part, it in part explains why we are ranked number one in the Caribbean and among the top 4% of the best universities globally in the Times Higher Education rankings. Orient ex occidente luz, a light rising from the west, is not just our motto, but a creed by which we live. It is our guiding principle, and it is by that principle that we have for over 73 years tried to teach and deliver courses that are associated with the Caribbean um, region. The University of the West Indies was founded at a time when our people were desperate for higher education training. And this training was not normally accessible to the majority of our people. Over the last seven decades, we have worked hard to fulfill our mission to provide access for thousands of Caribbean people who would not otherwise be able to obtain a high quality tertiary education. At the Mona campus, 70% of our students, approximately 70% of our students are first generation enrollees. This indicates that we are in need of reaching those that are most in need of a tertiary education. We know that to adequately prepare our students for the competitive local and global markets, we must ensure that they are thoroughly and appropriately equipped. As such, we at the University of the West Indies take a holistic approach to education, emphasizing the importance of excellence in academic pursuits balanced by an engagement with the wider world through various social, cultural, and environmental activities. We are confident that we are doing an excellent job of preparing our students for the challenge to come. Over the last few months, we have seen evidence of this preparation as many of our students joined the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. We saw them answer the call to man the COVID-19 helplines, to repair ventilators, and provide hand sanitizer, among other things. Our future is secure because we have a cadre of talented and creative young professionals who have shown that they are prepared to do what it takes to make a difference. The strides our students are making are no easy victories. Over the last years, or over the past decades, we have also witnessed a steady increase in the number of Jamaicans who have completed tertiary education programs at the University of the West Indies. However, the cost of financing these programs, even those which are funded through the support of regional governments is still prohibitive for many. The difficulty is understandable given that a significant proportion of our students come from challenging economic circumstances. As such, we are immensely grateful for the work of the Students' Loan Bureau because their support enables access to our many programs for thousands of students by making available in excess of one billion Jamaican dollars in loans over the past year. I wish to use this opportunity to remind our students and their parents that the Bureau it's still a viable option for financing tertiary education. And its expanded grant options have proven useful 
in providing for the daily needs while reading for a degree. Like so many others before you, the Student Loan Bureau is a tool you can access to make your dreams con come through. true. Let me thank the Student Loan Bureau for this collaboration, and I hope that our students and parents will find this session today very useful and productive. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Deputy Principal, for those comments. Um, we have since been joined by um, Mrs. Scott Crossley from the bursary. And uh, I'm going to call the bursar last, last since she's going to make a few remarks. So I'll give her time to catch her breath. Um, but we also have online Crystal McDonald uh, from the Students' Loan Bureau. We also have online Ishmael Preston and, um, and Ms. Taylor, I think that is Tanika, and um, our campus bursar, Mrs. Catherine Park Tweets, who we are now going to ask just to give a word of greetings. Good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen in the council room and ladies and gentlemen online. My name is Catherine Park Thwaites and I am Mona Campus Bursa and I'd like to say welcome and I'm looking forward to this exciting time that will be unfolding for all the new entrants here at the university. Um, I want to endorse uh, um, Deputy Bursa, Deputy Principal Boxhill actually started where I was going to start, and that is that this is a time, this is truly the start of your adult lives as you join us here at the university, and part of that is planning your lives. And financial planning for us all is the biggest part within our adult lives for us to achieve our goals whether it is education, our homes, our first cars, all of those things. And it's very important. The bursary stands ready to help and assist Mrs. Scott Crosley and the Student um, Assistant Services, SAS, you'll learn that acronym very quickly, um, are here to assist you and help. But it is important that as young adults starting your careers, starting your field of study, that you also look for financial planning and as Dr. Boxhill had very ably pointed out, um, you d using the options and tools available here on campus through the various loan agencies. Apart from the Student Loan Bureau, who is a very long and valued partner with the Guild, ourselves, and the student body, it is important we understand that we have other institutions who also stand ready to help with financing. And this is an important part for planning for the success as you go through the years here at UE. It is important we recognize that financing will take the pressure off when you are dealing with all the new things and all the new pressures that are occurring here. And as the bursary, as I said, stands ready to help, I look forward to meeting and greeting many of you as you are in the bursary and cashier area as we start the school year. And if you have any questions or concerns, please remember SAS stands ready to answer all questions required. So welcome, and we look forward to a long and mutually beneficial relationship as you guys go through your new degrees here. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Madam Bursa. Um, I'd just like to point out, ladies and gentlemen and students, um, that um, while we do recognize that the Student Loan Bureau has been a long and faithful partner and perhaps the major uh, financier of, of uh, student financing um, in Jamaica, um, 
they are not the only um, source of financing and uh, we are going to have a presentation from the Students Loan Bureau but thereafter we are going to ask our own um, Director of the Office of Student Financing to sort of give you an overview and point you in the direction of other opportunities for financing your degree such as scholarships and fellowships and I do want to take the opportunity at this juncture to thank our many, many, many partners who have uh, generously provided bursaries and scholarships um, to many of our students um, to facilitate um, their education. Truly, financing tertiary education is almost an all-of-country effort. And so many people in the private sector, NGOs, alumni groups, etc., have really come on board um, to assist. As a campus, we also assist our students in, in going abroad in the work and study. That has um, not been very active in the last year because of COVID, but we always stand ready to facilitate those of our students who want to make use of that, that opportunity because it is indeed also an important source of funding. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further um, talk, I would just like now to turn over to our partners uh, from the Student Loan Bureau to uh, Miss Karina Higgins, who will make a presentation. Miss Higgins. Good morning, everyone. I am here today to discuss the loan types that the Students Loan Bureau offer. I'm here today to discuss the loan types that the Students Loan Bureau offer and the benefits you can access from granting an SLB loan. What we do, the Students Loan Bureau provides funding to Jamaican nationals pursuing tertiary level education and needs assistance with tuition financing. 99% of the students who apply for SLB financing are successful. The Students Loan Bureau offer three loan products. The targeted loan, the pay as you study loan, and the postgraduate loan. The targeted loan caters to applicant pursuing undergraduate studies. Borrowers are not required to repay their loan until after completion of studies. You receive 100% tuition funding from the Students Loan Bureau. Borrowers get 15 to 20 years to repay the loan. We offer the lowest interest rate island-wide. While you're in school and you want to repay the loan, the interest rate is 7.8. After you have completed your program of study, the interest rate is 9.5. The targeted loan, each applicant can access up to 1 million per academic year. Effective April 1st, 2021, only one guarantor is required. Our application period begins mid-February and end May each year. Repayments begin September following the year of completion of the student study. The Student Loan Bureau offer grants, conditions apply. Our other loan product that the Student Loan Bureau offer is a pay-as-you-study loan. This loan is tailored to employed professionals who are pursuing their undergraduate studies. However, if students are not employed and do wish to benefit from this loan type, your parents, relative, a spouse, or friend can take out this loan on your behalf. Students access up to one million per academic year. Repayment begins one month after disbursement occur. This loan is repaid via salary deduction. You have up to 84 months to repay the loan. Only one guarantor is required and the interest rate is 6% per year. If you should borrow 282,000, your monthly payments would be 4,800. 
A credit check is done on the individual who is borrowing the loan. No application deadline, therefore you can access this loan facility throughout the year. You apply online. How to apply for a loan from the Students' Loan Bureau? For first-time applicants, you would have to visit our website, which is www.slbja.com, to register with an active email address. Once the registration process is completed, an activation email will be sent to your personal email. Afterwards, you are required to complete and submit the online application, which consists from sections A to K. Once the application is submitted, a telephone interview will be conducted for new applicants for the purpose of document verification. Document submission is done via Dropbox facility, which is located at our office, or students can choose to submit documents at UE Mona. The application fee is 1000 for all loan types that the Students Loan Bureau offer. Documents required for first-time applicant. Your TRN, one certified passportized photograph, your birth certificate, student identification for students who are already enrolled in a tertiary institution, PATH registration if an applicant is a recipient of PATH, proof of banking, and this must be the student's personal account, not a parent, a friend, or a spouse. A valid photograph identification, such as your passport, driver's license, or a national ID. Income verification for all employed household members, acceptance letters for new students entering universities, transcript, transcript if you're an existing student. After you have submitted your application and the loan is approved, students are required to submit loan contract documents. What are the advantages of accessing a loan from the Students' Loan Bureau? One of the lowest educational interest rates island-wide, which is 6% if you are studying STEM program, such as science, technology, engineering, and maritime studies. With special conditions, that 6% can be reduced to 4%. In school period, while you're in school, you're not required to repay the loan. But if you do, the interest rate is 7.8. We offer 50,000 grants to students. No collateral is required. Concessions offered by the Students' Loan Bureau. 35% reduction in processing fee if you are a part beneficiary. With this 35%, currently our processing fee is 5,200. And if you're a part recipient, you will only require to pay $3,412.50. If you are a child of a public sector worker, you will receive a 1% reduction in interest rate during repayment and also a discount of 35% in the processing fee. Students who apply and are successful for scholarship from the JAMVATS otherwise known as Jamaica Values and Attitude Program, will receive 70% of their tuition from the Students' Loan Bureau due to the fact that JAMVAT only provides 30%. The Students' Loan Bureau benefits. We offer good standing promotion to students who maintain a minimum GPA of 2.5 and over while in school will receive a 2% reduction in interest rate. Whilst you're in school, the interest rate is 7.8, and with this benefit, you're only required to pay 5.8 as it relates to interest rates. Customers in repayment whose accounts are current or no more than 30 days past due will also benefit from a 2% reduction in interest rates. Borrowers permanently employed to a registered charity for at least one year will benefit from a debt 
forgiveness, which is 10%, meaning that if you borrow a loan and you have approximately 10,000 to repay, you will get 10% of that amount being reduced. What's next? Apply today. We are ready to serve you. Thank you very much. And in Cyberland, I would ask you to give the Student Loan Bureau a hand as we are giving them inside here. Thank you so much. I think that that was very rich and valuable information. Um, and you are now empowered um, to go forward and apply at the Student Loan Bureau. What they didn't tell you is that their war chest is almost inexhaustible. So don't worry about you know, them not having money. They do have the resources. And you have seen the wonderful concession that they have made to some categories, apart from the low interest rate for everybody. So as I said before, that was one source. And if you have any questions, just keep them. We are going to field the questions in a while, in a while rather. But for now, I'm going to turn over to uh, Ms. Shauna Hastings, our Director of the Office of Student Financing here on campus. And she will give you an overview of what are some of the opportunities and possibilities uh, of financing your education through bursaries and scholarships here on campus. Shauna. Professor Ian Boxdale, Deputy Principal, UWI Mona Campus, Dr. Donovan Stanbury, Mrs. Catherine Park Sweet, Campus Bursa, our special guests from the Students Loan Bureau, other members of the UWI management team, and other members of the UWI staff, our special guests on YouTube parents, students, potential students, good morning to you all. Now, the Office of Student Financing is the undergraduate financial aid office for the UWI Mona campus. We assist students in various areas. Um, we have partnered with the Students Loan Bureau today because many of your queries or issues that you have with the Bureau would be resolved by contacting the Office of Student Financing, and we will liaise on your behalf. Now, our bursa mentioned how important it is to plan for funding your education. Sometimes it does seem impossible, but if you access information from the correct sources, then you will find out really how possible it is. Scholarships and bursaries are offered through the Office of Student Financing. Each year, we accept applications between April and June. We will adjust the dates based on what is happening. So for example, last year, we would have extended our application period up to August to facilitate students who were being made late offers by our admission section. Outside of our standard scholarships and bursaries, which you will find on our website, we have some special bursaries that are all funded by the Mona campus. We have the Faculty of Medical Sciences Bursary, which is 50% of the tuition. We have the Faculty of Engineering Bursary, and we have the Faculty of Law Bursary. All these bursaries are for Jamaican students who do not yet have a first degree and who have a financial need. The application period for these bursaries are different. It is between June and August of these of each year. And this is the timeline for those bursaries because a student would typically need to have CAPE 2 before the university would complete offer, making offers to students. So we try to align with what is happening in the space to ensure that every student can be facilitated. Outside of scholarships and bursaries through the Office of Student Financing, as the student's loan would have mentioned, there is the Jamaica Valleys and Attitudes program that we promote, which is offered through the Ministry of Education. And a student is able to sign up for that program, do 200 hours of community service, and have 30% of their tuition paid by the ministry, up to a maximum of 350,000. We also promote the UWI UTEC Students Revolving Loan that is facilitated by the UWI and administered by EDUCOM Cooperative Credit Union. 
those loans also have preferential rates for our students and you are not required to be a member of the credit union before you can access that benefit at the time of which you find that you have a financial need and you need to um, then the shortfall that you have in your tuition you are able to sign up with the credit union and become a member at that time and access the loan immediately we also have federal student aid because we may have some students from the United States who are online or eligible stu students, sorry. Um, we have information on our website that speaks to it. And if you are an American citizen or an eligible American citizen, you're able to access the US Department of Education federal student loan through the Office of Student Financing. And you're able to access all the benefits that, go with, that goes with that loan through the Office of Student Financing. Sometimes our students will ask, how are we funded? Now, we are funded by the UWI, as I mentioned, as well as persons locally and overseas, entities and individuals. Persons have a passion to help, and as long as students are willing to do what is necessary, they will be assisted. Each year, we have a revised application form that is published on the Office of Student Financing's website. The application form, it has been condensed, I would say, many times to make it very easy for students to input their information. It's important that the form is completed properly and it's completed with all the information that you have. We do find that sometimes students will leave parts of the form blank. Now that is a problem when you take it to a scholarship interview because the information that is requested is the information that based on our surveys, most donors need in order for a decision to be taken as to whether or not you will be awarded. The time is now for you to start planning if you have not started planning. If you need information on Students Loan Bureau, as they have mentioned, any of the offerings that have mentioned about that have mentioned so far, information about Grace Kennedy Foundation, NCB Foundation, things that you're unclear about on their website, please feel free to contact the Office of Student Financing and we will assist you. Our website is mona.uwi.edu slash OSF. I hope that the information is helpful and I'm here if you have any questions that you need answered. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, um, Mrs. C. Stins, and uh, we can give her a round of applause too. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, our students um, for whom this information session has been planned um, it might be a little difficult to absorb everything because you are loaded with a lot of information this morning. But please, as Shauna has um, encouraged you, please follow the, the, our websites and all the information is there. And um, don't be afraid to take up the phone and call um, because we are very, very interested in you accessing all of these benefits. Unfortunately, sometimes some of our scholarships are uh, they are really undersubscribed because um, unfortunately sometimes our students don't take the time to investigate what is available out there and you have every uh, reason so to do. Before we start the questions I would like to say one thing though because I've observed that um, I know it's, it's, it's COVID pandemic and many people are wondering whether or not they should engage uh, with their education they should start because times are uncertain. Um, our senior sister and registrar of admissions is here and we have been tracking the application numbers and we are seeing a little dip. My encouragement to everybody, it's better for you to apply and get an offer and you don't have the money and then you can defer rather than sitting down and doing nothing and then you find that in September some fortune come to you and you have not had an application. So even now we are encouraging you to step up the applications and um, engage us. I mean, we have a range of programs here and we can give you some kind of a advice in terms of what you can uh, apply for, you know, and so on and so forth. So 
in essence the entire administration of UWI is at your disposal to help you to make this important decision. So at this time we're going to take your questions. Um, please put your questions um, on the YouTube chat. Um, somebody's monitoring it and we're going to field them and we have everybody here um, prepared to answer any questions you might have. Um, So, um, Crystal McDonald, she will. Okay. Miss Taylor from Markham, she will, um, she will feel your questions. Go ahead, Miss Taylor, if you have some, please. Good morning. We have quite a few questions in the chat. Uh, the first question is, when does the new school year begin? Can when you unmute, Ms. Taylor? We are not hearing your questions, please. Are Go you ahead, please. Am I being heard? How about now? Am I being um, heard? We're having some issues here. We, we can't hear you, Ms. Taylor. How about now? Am I being heard now? Go ahead, please. All right. So the first question is, when exactly does the new school year begin? I think this is a question for admissions. Okay. When exactly does the school year begin? Um, we Well, the semester starts on the 1st of August. I think actual classes will start around about the last week of August, um, thereabout. The other question is, when does registration open for, for current students? Um, Mr. Hatcher, can you take that one, please? Hello, hi, good morning. So registration for the 2021-2022 academic year opens on August 1. Thank you. The other question, will school be online or face-to-face? -face? Deputy Principal. <laughs> um, we intend to continue the online mode of delivery. Um, that is unless something dramatic happens between now and um, September, meaning with the vaccines. Um, but for now, until we have um, a population that is well vaccinated, we will continue to offer largely online um, classes. However, we do have some classes, especially those that, are, um, that have a clinical component and the lab component. Those classes will be offered face-to-face um, uh, um, with, of course, observing the, uh, the various protocols. Thank you. There's a question here for the Student Loan Bureau. Uh, there are someone that wants to know why doesn't student loan allow a guarantor to be eligible for a post-grad loan? Student loan, please. Um, good morning. For the post-graduate loan, you need a guarantor as a person that is going to take responsibility in the, in the case or in the event that the loan goes into arrears. So it is no collateral, but it's just that that individual stands as a guarantee in the event the loan go into arrears. And that person will assume the role of the borrower. Thank you. Another question for you, student loan. Uh, when is the deadline to apply for a loan this year? The deadline okay. ten. The, okay, go ahead, Mrs. McDonald. Okay, based on the fact that we started late this year in terms of the application period, because historically we usually open the application period in February. However, with the pandemic, we had some delays, so we opened in April. We opened on rather April twelfth of this year. 
We have not yet decided on our deadline. So you're just going to have to keep abreast with us on our social media platforms, or you can make call us at 619-4752, where you can get the information as to what we will possibly have the deadline to be. Before the next question, Ms. Sorry. Before the next question, Ms. Taylor, just to be exact, classes start at UWI Mona for the new 2021-2022 academic year on the 6th of September. Just to be precise. Thank you very much. Great. Now I'm seeing a lot of questions about tuition. So there are students that want to know uh, when is tuition due for payment? What is the tuition for the upcoming year? And where can they find information on the tuition? Um, I'm going to ask um, Mr. Archer to assist me um, with this particular question. Um, in relation to tuition fees for the upcoming academic year, we are currently in the process of preparing the fee schedules with an aim to release about by the latest, the second week of July. In relation to our UGC programs, there will be a slight increase. Uh, in terms of our regulations, in terms of payment of fees, we will publish that information by about the first week of July with the campus offering its usual um, payment plan. The payment plan this semester, this academic year being to enter the plan, a student, our students will have to pay 25% as a deposit and 25% at the end of each month, September, October, no and November, ahead of the start of final exams. Thank uh, you. That, that was actually another question. May we just remind you, though, that for any conceivable um, program that, that we offer, our price is very, very competitive and in most instances uh, lower than obtains um, in, in our, comp our competition. Um, I don't want to call names. So even though Mr. Archie said there's a slight increase, um, please bear that in mind. Um, Dr. Allen, yes. Was that heard? Um, you have to repeat, Doctor. The, your mic was off. Okay. All right. So you were asking where the fees can be found. They can be found on the UIMONA website. There's a link that says "Check My Fees," and when you click on it, you will see fees. Um, both the tuition fees and your miscellaneous fees. So you need to know your registration status, part-time, full-time, your nationality. The fees are broken down in that order. Additionally, you, you will receive an email, so keep checking your email with the registration guidelines and also um, what Mr. Archie um, explained about the payment plan. All of these registration and payment of fees information will be in that email. For new students, for incoming students, please check your application portal. The tuition and fees will be uploaded in your portal. So keep checking. Other information is also included in your application portal. Thank you very much. And remember the magic date, latest second week of July. Just a quick question to just clarify what we mean by UGC funded programs. We refer again to um, Mr. Archer with that one. Um, thank you. In relation to our UGC funded programs, these are programs that are, that are sponsored by the contributing governments of the university. 
So these programs are subsidized a bit and are not considered self-financing, whereby those students in our self-financing programs pay the full fee for their program of study. Thank you. We have a question here. I think this may be for admissions. How does a student with IB qualifications access a scholarship or a bursary? A student with IB qualifications is not differentiated from any other student. All right. So they, they, we do not base our scholarships or bursaries on nationality. Once you apply, then you can get through. Um, if you're a Jamaican, there, there are scholarships there, and as Ms. Hastings had said, if you are US, um, a U.S. citizen, you have the federal loans. So as an IB student, you get your offer. We do not differentiate. In terms of fees, your fees are differentiated based on your nationality, but scholarships are available to everybody. Thank you. Where can one get information about JAMPAT, and what is the deadline to apply? Um, Mrs. Hastings. Information on JAMVAT is on the Minister of Education's website under the tertiary unit section. You. Are there scholarship options or bursary options for part time students? Okay, before we take that one, um, I think Dr. Allen wants to add something to the JAMVAT question. For the JAMVAT program, you would need to have your offer letter in your hand. And in addition, you will also have to fill out the form, as Ms. Hastings said. But most importantly, you have to complete 200 volunteer hours at an approved government institution. So just bear that in mind when and where you will do those 200 hours. OK, can you repeat the other question now, Ms. Trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Taylor, Sorry, yes. yes, I. Okay. Hmm. What is the. Okay, there's another question. What if a student misses the deadline to accept their offer? Okay, um, that is not a problem. Just reach out to us in admissions. You can call us, 970-100224. You can also email us, admissions at uwimona.edu. Um, dot JM, and what we will do is to just refresh your offer, so it's not a problem. And also, if it is that you accepted an offer, and later on down, you find that um, you need an offer that you had rejected, that is the one that you want or can afford for whatever reason, the same thing applies. Just reach out to us, and we will just refresh your offer, and you go back in and accept your offer. This is very important, so I would like for us to repeat those contacts. God, this is super important for us. All right. So just know that we in the admission section, we're here to work with you. All right? Now, many of you would have applied to several programs, and some of you would have received offers to other programs that you may not have applied to. But in processing your application, we deemed that you were eligible for these programs. So some of you would have received multiple offers, and you may be accepting them as you go along. Please indicate your offer, whether accept, reject, accept, and reject or defer on each offer that you get, okay? Now, if it is that there's an offer that you had rejected, and later on down, a few weeks, a few months from now, you decide that you want back that offer, please indicate to us, call us at 970-1002-4, or email admissions at uwimona.edu.jm, and ask us to refresh your offer because the offer had expired. It's not a problem. Right. Are, are there scholarship options available for part-time students? Okay. We, at this time, we don't have many scholarships that are for part-time students because most of our donors, in terms of the formal offerings, they prefer to offer to full-time. However, once a part-time student contacts the office and expresses a need, then based on the circumstance that they outline, we will know which donor or or entity that we partner with to contact in order to access assistance for the students. 
sometimes we're successful i would say most times we're successful um what will result in an issue sometimes is if the student has been in the program for an excessively long time um, so it is important that even if you're not meeting a certain GPA standard that you're progressing in your program in line with the standard that is set out by the university and that makes a difference in how you can be assisted throughout your program. Thank you. Is the UE Open Scholarship going to be available for this academic year? Unfortunately, no, it is not open for this academic year. However, all the awardees who would have been on the program before this year and who have met the academic standard will be continued on the scholarship. I have a question here regarding offers. What is the period for offers this year, especially in light of LinkedIn and NCSEC results? Okay, so applications opened last year in November. Those who would have met the entry requirements would have been receiving their offers since then. For those programs that require the second unit of CAPE, we have a provision in place, and it has been around a long time. Um, persons to, to non-professional programs would have received their offers already, as long as you're registered to sit unit two. For the professional programs, um, the university has decided to waive our matriculation requirements somewhat. And so those persons who are awaiting their second units of CAPE for these professional programs, they will soon be hearing from us too. So um, we will be reviewing those applications and you will be receiving your offers once you meet the eligibility requirements. So just to reiterate, if you're sitting your unit two this year, do not worry. Um, we have a whole slew of programs, as the campus registrar had said. One way or another, you will get an offer. For those who have professional programs as their first choice, remember, though, that these programs are quota-based, one, and two, they're very competitive in nature, right? So you may not get an offer to your first choice, but certainly we have offers there available for you. Thank you. I am seeing another question here. Uh, how do students pay their tuition? Do they need to come on the campus? Can they pay through a bank? How do they pay their tuition? Madam Bursa, you want to? Okay. Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> yes, good morning. Um, we have a variety of ways that you can pay. Um, you can pay through any commercial bank or credit union. We are a registered bill payer. We also have um, payment online, and we also accept payments over the counter here. Whatever is most convenient for you. The one caveat I would say is when paying through bank transfers um, or through your commercial bank or your parents' commercial bank, please ensure to include your student number. But we accept funds in any denomination through any licensed commercial institution. You also have Paymaster, Bill Express, and if you have a credit card, you can also pay online. Thanks. I just want to add though, because invariably, even with all of these options, invariably, um, around about mid to early, early to mid-August, a number of students um, come to us here on campus to pay and over the last couple of years we have set up um, stations. payment stations even beyond what we have um, in the cashier we have set up special stations in um, in the assembly hall etc so um, that that is the least of, all of the worry we you know we will make sure that you pay by one of these means but just to re reiterate that there's no need for you to come on campus to pay. A lot of persons are of the view that unless they come on campus and join these long lines at the cashier, the money is going to hit their account at the same time. Um, as what the bursa said, as long as you include your ID number at any one of these locations, and we repeat, any commercial bank, um, well, National Commercial Bank, Jamaica National, those two I know of, 
um, Paymaster, Bill Express. If you have a credit card, you can pay online. Um, the credit union also here on campus, Edicom, in addition to our cashier. So there's no need for you to come and join our long lines here on campus at the cashier. Thank you. The other question I'm seeing here is regarding hall. So when will students find out the hall that they're attached to? And I'll just add to that question, how does an attachment differ from a, a hall accommodation? Mr. Jason McKenzie. Um, thank you so kindly um, for that. So in the application process, the, the form does ask for you to indicate the hall in which you wish to live. If it is that you're a commuting student, um, the hall you select, you'll become attached to that hall. So students in residence live in, um, in a particular hall, and students who are um, commuting will be attached to the hall of their choice. So, for example, um, Taylor Hall. You may be a commuting Taylorite, then you're attached to that hall. Um, in relation to, so the moment you apply, you are assigned to a hall of residence. Um, these are different times, and um, as a result of that, we are processing application, but as you'd have heard from our deputy principal, the students who may live on campus come the start of the new academic year will be primarily those who have to be here owing to a face-to-face -face component of their studies. So people who are doing um, clinical work in the Faculty of Medical Sciences, or students who are in one of the faculties that have laboratory sessions and require for you to be face to face. So that would be how we will treat with persons for this academic year who may live in, in residence. Thank you, Mr. McKenzie. There is a, another question here about scholarships. What are the basic scholarship requirements or the general scholarship requirements? GPA for students who are already enrolled. So second year to fifth year students if you're in medical sciences. However, we do have some scholarships where the donors reduce the GPA to as low as 2.5 for students. In order to access a scholarship, as I mentioned, you must complete the application form. There must be transparency in the process. Most scholarships are offered after an interview and the base document that is used is the application form when students are preparing for their interviews it's important to find out about the donor be prepared to answer questions about yourself and be prepared to be honest that has been an issue that has been identified on a number of occasions if you are not honest about the things that we ask in a scholarship interview, then the panel will um, infer that they are unable to make a decision about you based on the relevant information. So complete the application form, submit the application form on time. If there's a challenge submitting the application form on time, reach out to us. This is a special time. There's a pandemic. We typically will still accept the form as long as you would have outlined why you could not meet the deadline. For students who are given offers um, subsequent to June 30th, you're still allowed to submit your application forms because the admission section would have advised us when they issued the last set of offers and we work with those dates to collect the forms. In terms of being in the interviews, we have moved 100% online since the COVID-19 pandemic started. For all scholarship interviews, they're online. You're still required to dress properly, um, conduct yourself in a professional manner. On our website, we do have tips on how to prepare yourself for the interviews. And if you find that there's something that is still missing when you're preparing, we ask that you contact us so that we can assist you further. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Taylor, before the next question, the Deputy Principal would like to revisit the question in relation to the halls. Uh, regarding um, the hall assignment, the, first of all, whether or not we 
uh, return to a complete um, in-person um, classes is um, dependent on the national situation. So it is conceivable that come January next year, um, we may have a situation where we allow um, higher levels of um, occupancy on the halls and indeed more face-to-face -face classes if they, um, there is greater availability of the vaccine and importantly take up of that, uh, of, of that vaccine so that uh, if the national situation changes, it will also impact on how we conduct our business with respect to classes, but um, in the instant of the question about the hall, also about um, the extent to which we will allow students on hall. So it entirely depends on the national situation. Go ahead, Mr. Taylor. What is the step after paying your commitment fee? Uh, can you repeat that, please? What is the next step after paying your commitment fee? The next step after paying commitment fees, um, Dr. Allen? All right, just um, the commitment fees are actually part of your, your uh, tuition and miscellaneous fees. So even though we say it's non-refundable, um, it's part of that. It goes towards that. No, it, what happens afterwards for and on this for these new students we ask again that you read the documents that are uploaded in your application portal now there is an important um, guide in there it's called a guide for incoming students and it explains to you all the next steps so yes you accept your offer you you show us your commitment by paying that fee once you register for your courses and registration, Mr. Archie had mentioned when registration will open for you to select your courses. Now, when registration opens, you do not go ahead and select your courses without first getting your academic advising from your individual faculties and departments. And that advising um, process, it takes place during the week of orientation and Mr. McKenzie um, can speak to the orientation dates. We have different types of orientations. We have a general orientation that is managed by his office. You also have international students orientation, and you also have the various faculties and department orientations. So once you have completed your advising session, then you can go ahead and select your courses and uh, teaching will begin subsequent after but I'm going to ask Mr. Mackenzie now to tell you the dates for orientation and all the exciting things that they're planning for you during that orientation session. Thank you very much um, Dr. Allen. I think it is important that our students are both um, socially and academically integrated into our, our institution and the orientation process is designed to do just that to help you um, successfully adjust to university life and to transition to this space and to give you the best opportunity to succeed. Our work is really to foster student success and the orientation process is an important start to this process. You, end, you start well, you will end well. It, 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 for us, it's a, it's a foundation of excellence to help you to become aware of the services that are available to you at the institution and to, and to help you to lay a foundation for um, a tenure of, of, of success. And so we have specific and particular orientation exercises geared towards um, different groupings. So for our regional and international students, we will start with a set of webinars you know, leading up to the, 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 the main date of orientation. But there is an, an orientation plan on the 25th of August for our regional and international students. Then we'll have general orientation for all our new students on the 26th and 27th of, of August. The, the week after that, which is the week of the 29th, um, we now go into faculty orientation. Um, that entire week is for our faculty. On the Thursday of that week, there is an orientation session planned specifically for our new graduate students. Um, uh, before that, on July 25, we will have an orientation session for our parents and family members, right? 
our parents and, 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 and family members are an important part of um, the learning process. They are key stakeholders in this process. And we want, I want you to bear those dates in mind. You know, put them in your calendar. They're available um, through the various forms. You know, Dr. Allen spoke about what you would have you know, uploaded in your, in, in, in your package. And the information is there. And we'll also have a, a new student orientation website that you will get all additional information. So bear the dates in mind. August 25, new regional international students. 26 and 27, general orientation for all uh, new, new students. Um, the week of the 29th of August, orientation, um, faculty orientation, we'll get all your faculty advising, you'll meet your deans, so forth and so on, and there will be a specific schedule for each faculty during the course of that week. On the Thursday of that week, we have orientation speci geared specifically towards our new graduate students. So we look forward to really sharing with you on those important dates as we welcome you into our academy. And these dates can be found in the guide for incoming students that is in your, your application portal. Uh, so in the meantime, two things you have to do for those of you who are doing your CAPE exams, um, your IB exams, we wish you all the best. Do not worry, you have already put in your application, just keep checking your email for information from us. But so study hard, that's number one. Do not fret about what is going to come. Leave that up to your parents. But number two, the programs that you have selected and you have been offered to and you accepted, we ask that you read the handbooks, right? The handbooks for each of these programs. They are available on the faculty website. Each faculty has a website. And the handbooks are there. The handbooks are very important tools because they speak about the academic requirements. They speak about the regulations, part-time, full-time. All, all your questions that you may have about switching between um, these, you know, whether part-time or registration, or it, it explains your offer. It explains the duration of your program, what it is that the faculty requires of you in order for you to, to walk across one day, if it's not COVID or graduation stage, and get your award. But most importantly, for the academic advising, it prepares you because it sets out the sequence of courses that you must select. Right? Um, so for your program, we have prerequisite courses that you must complete before moving on to the others. The courses are ordered in a particular fashion. So read your handbook. And so when you go to advising, you're able to participate um, better. OK. Um, thank you very much. Um, Ms. Taylor, uh, we have about 10 minutes before wrap up. Um, I certainly would like to hear more questions on financing. I mean, our friends from Student Loan are here, and we are very keen on that. So if you could filter the questions, and perhaps we can have a mechanism where we can post um, answers to questions that we will not be able to answer um, within the next 10 minutes or so. Certainly. So we do still have a few financing questions, but there is one quick question that I'd like to just get in, and this is about the English language proficiency exam. Persons want to know how they go about sitting that exam. Proficiency exam, who can, who can answer that? Okay, so information for the ELPT, it's on the Department of Linguistics. So once you go onto the MONO website, just go into the search link, Department of Linguistics Philosophy. Um, that's in the Faculty of Humanities and Education. You can also contact them. And what they have, they have dates for these exams. There's a registration period, uh, which has a cutoff date if you want to sit exams. The exams are offered throughout the year. Um, in these times, no, I'm not sure exactly how often they're, they're you know, they're um, having these exams, but certainly the dates are there on the website. So just look for the Department of Linguistics and Philosophy, Faculty of Humanities and Education. The dates are there, the registration process, because you'd have to pay the fee at, I think, National Commercial Bank. It used to be $2,000. And you then you register online and you get other information in terms of studying for the exam. So let's do two more questions questions and then we'll ask our guild president for some remarks and then we wrap up please all right um will your commitment or is your commitment fee transferable if you accept a new offer yes it is as i said before it goes towards your 
tuition and miscellaneous fees so no matter what offer you get that money is it sits on your account and is applied to whatever program that you eventually register for and another question here I'm seeing, when does application for the installment or payment plan open and is there an interest rate that is applied? Okay, the installment plan will be open during the week of August 4. Currently, there is no in interest that is charged on it. Just before we, we, we wrap um, CR through you, I, I know we spoke about it already. However, if um, we can probably just repeat for the benefit of, benefit of those persons who wouldn't have heard uh, about whether classes are going to be online or face-to-face. -face. Well, as, I said, as was said before, for now, we do not see full face-to-face -face classes because we will not be able to reach that level of herd immunity in Jamaica as a whole to facilitate that. But a lot will depend on what the governments um, will determine at, the, at that point in time. For now, we are planning for first semester um, the same online mode. And as was said before, those students who are involved um, with, in programs that have a clinical component or laboratory components, those we will facilitate face to face. What will happen in semester two is left to be seen based on how the whole immunization program um, unfolds. Um, but for now, we see September um, to continue online. Um, may I turn over now to our guild president? Greetings, Pelicans. It's always a pleasure to be here representing, serving, and speaking with you all. The Guild has also been getting some questions, and we also did a survey of our freshers, and 96.7% of you said that tuition is your top concern, so I hope you are taking advantage of this session. Um, that being said, there are two questions that I wanted to feel that the students had given, and the first would go to SLB. Our students in law were asking if the SLB um, covers the full tuition for law. Yes. yes. Um, okay. Go ahead, Miss McDonald. Okay. No, no, no unsubsidized. So we do not give full Right? Right? You apply for the targeted loan, which you get up to a million dollars. You can also simultaneously apply for that of the pay as you study, right? So you can get up to $2 million, right? And I know that the university also offers a bursary, but we do not give you the full tuition, all right? Thank you for that. And they're also asking if they can get the, the document that was presented or if it can be circulated to them um, from the SLB presentation earlier. Um, also, there were two questions for OSF. And that first question was, um, how do you apply for the OSF scholarships? Because they're saying they don't see an apply button. I know there's a document, so if you could just tell them briefly about that. And the second part of that is how long does it take to get a response from OSF after filling out the documents? Okay. Um, actually, there is an apply now button online on the Office of Student Financing website. There is an information page that speaks to scholarships and bursaries. We have all the scholarships and bursaries listed under faculties. So each, each scholarship that is applicable to a particular faculty is listed in that way on the website. Um, in terms of applying, we also have an information page that speaks to the process. The students are required to generate application form online, complete and submit it to our office. In submitting, you will take it to take or send it to SAS and leave it in the drop box there. Um, we do know that students would prefer and we also would prefer an online process and so we're working with our IT department at this time to become fully online. 
There is also a roadmap that is on the Office of Student Financing website, and it speaks to how you apply. So it tells you the deadline, the, the timelines for application, where you submit the form, when you will receive a response. As it relates to that question, because most of the applications are processed by interviews, then we seek to start the interviews by mid-August and we go all the way up to October, mid-October each year. Um, sometimes the scholarships that we start with in June are not all the scholarships that we end with because we do have donors that come on board throughout the year and once we have donors who come on board then we seek to process the application the the awards within those academic years many of our donors who come on board they will indicate in writing their intent to not only offer scholarships for for current year but also for several years and will also um, seal their intent by sending those funds so we ensure that once the funds are on the books and once we have a commitment as to the periods that the donors want the funds to be processed for we go ahead with awarding those monies each academic year excuse me there is one thing i didn't say um, that i know many students have questions about even though it hasn't been posed and that is repath the path bursary students who are registered in a path household once you matriculate to the uwi then you apply here for the bursary the application form is on our website and the application period opens august 1st it is well second because the first is a holiday so it's august 2nd up to september 30th each year many times students will write to ask if they can submit an application after September 30th, we're only able to give that information once the Minister of Labor confirms because it is their award and it is administered through the Office of Student Financing. So that's important information for students. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that response. And the last question, they're asking for admissions to please repeat the contact information. Okay, I was told that um, it will be on the website, so you can check in your chat, it should be there. But the numbers are 970-1002-4, or you can email us admissions at uwimona.edu.jm. It's on your screen. Thank you so much. Um, our colleagues from Student Loan, um, you don't mind if your presentation is circulated, would you? No. no okay no. so we're going to ask our marketing team to arrange um for the circulation of the presentation um from the student loan bureau i think the best place to find that probably would be on our website we, we probably could put it there huh pardon me it on youtube okay so it will be on youtube so you can revisit you know as i was you know, thinking while all the presentations were being made. Um, those of us with bank accounts, we check it every single day, you know. Um, it doesn't make the money get any more, but we do check it every day. And if I were a student, believe you me, I would live on the OSF um, website to, to, to really satisfy myself that I have done everything um, to be qualified for a bursary or a scholarship are in fact even the student loan i would be there every day because there is nothing more important than your education so to wrap up i'm going to ask our dp if he has any final words uh with respect to um the new semester i and a new academic year i hope that um, our students and certainly um the parents um have um, received um at least uh, sufficient information to start making decisions about how to address the financial issues that you normally face that you're normally faced with um, we expect that in the coming year that as we address the covid situation nationally uh, for things to get a little better i'm an optimist so we are also hopeful that with that that the financial situation will get a little better for all of us and we expect and we hope and in fact we know that the SLB will, con will continue to be a partner um, in the helping to finance student education so I would like on behalf of the university 
um, on behalf of all of us here to thank the Student Loan Bureau um, for coming uh, with us to help to deal with a pressing problem that uh, we are all faced with. And um, as we move forward, we hope that, as I said, things will get better and uh, that as we continue um, on this course to ensure that we have access, that um, our people have great access to university education, that they will also, along with that, be a way to reduce the difficulty that they have in paying off um, this education. So, Registrar, let me th um, thank all of us for participating, um, especially, as I said, the Student Loan Bureau, and we look forward to working with the students and, indeed, their parents uh, moving forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deputy Principal, and thank you very much for spending all of this time with us. Um, we want to thank our students, both prospective and continuing students. Um, we want to thank our guild president, um, you know, who I know will be a strong advocate for you and will work with us in partnership to ensure that you have the greatest possible experience here at UWI Mona. I want to thank the team from MITS and the team from marketing who have worked behind the scenes to make this um, seminar, webinar possible. And all of those, our colleagues here, from bursary, from OSF, from OSSD, etc., and the registry who have fielded um, your questions and answered them. Um, thank you all very much. Thank you, students, and looking forward to seeing you, um, whether face to face or online, come September when we hope to be, um, you know, in full swing again. Thank you so much.